I doubt you've missed me on more than one occasion saying that human apes are curious creatures. And for the topic of today, I think we are perhaps the most curious, at least in some respects. And that is the notion of the just world, sometimes referred to as the just world hypothesis, which suggests to us that humans have an endemic inherent belief that the world or the universe operates in accordance with a cosmic order of sorts, that good things come to good people, in air quotes, and bad things come to bad people, in air quotes, and that the universe itself inherently operates in accordance with these principles. And you can see this across the board. And interestingly enough, this doesn't just apply to humans, but indeed animals. You might not be aware of this, but humans in medieval Europe had a long and storied history of putting animals on trial. There were basically two sorts. You had ecclesiastical trials, which typically put vermin, i.e. rats, on trial for misdeeds and misdemeanors. And then you had cases that were more secular, local, that is in municipalities, towns, etc., etc., that put individual animals on trial. So let's say, for example, that a horse went buck wild and kicked an individual or several individuals to death. That horse would be put on trial and then invariably found guilty of crimes that it had committed. And in the case of the rats, obviously they would be put on trial for various things, plague, etc., etc. Very common practice. In fact, so common that this persisted into the 20th century. There's a very famous example of an elephant, an Asiatic elephant called Mary, in 1916, if recollection serves, that went admittedly on a bit of a rampage and killed a bunch of people. And the reason for this was she was being treated extremely poorly. She was being prodded with a hook. She was not a happy elephant. In any event, she went nuts, killed a bunch of people. And what happened? They strung her up on a crane. Yes, they hanged this elephant in a display of quote-unquote justice by a crane. And so this sense of cosmic order and justice that either will be delivered or must be delivered, that's another important aspect to this, is something that is pretty endemic to human beings. And there's a multiplicity of phrases and figures of speech in English which attest to this. He got what's coming to him, or you reap what you sow. And in some instances, it actually makes sense. There's some logical sequence of events that leads to somebody commenting, he got what he deserved, or he's reaping what he's sowing. Maybe you're talking about a bank robber that has committed bank robbery multiple times and he ends up in jail for decades. Yeah, there is a logical sequence of events that leads to that. But what we're talking about today in specific is the idea of how our perception of human beings, whether they're beautiful, intelligent, sick, or otherwise, interferes with that notion of cosmic order, of the just world. And indeed, what has been revealed over time, over the last few decades, is that we have a very, very, very biased way of perceiving what is just and what is not at times. Sometimes it's more clear-cut, at least in a traditional interpretation of justice, such as the one I mentioned vis-a-vis -vis the bank robber example. But in other cases, it's not at all. So, for example, one thing that has been consistently observed over many decades of researching this is that Oftentimes, people who suffer, they have an illness or an addiction or some other issue, they are quote-unquote blamed. Now, I know these days there's this term victim blaming, but it's been twisted, you could argue. But nonetheless, this idea that if somebody falls prey to the ravages of cancer, they're somehow responsible for that. And here, of course, the devil is in the details if you want to actually create an etiology of a specific type of cancer, you could say, well, this person had this type of lifestyle and didn't exercise and didn't do this and that. However, oftentimes it just happens and there's no explanation that would justify that feeling of, well, this guy is somehow guilty and deserves what he got. And so we have this persistent notion of people get what they deserve and that the world and the universe operates in this manner. And here there is almost necessarily an interaction with the so-called halo effect, 
or to use the term coined by none other than Lord Gingers himself, Pete, that guy who's always invited to gatherings, the phalo effect. Sick people are not attractive usually. They're ill, they look unhealthy, and therefore aren't fit for breeding, as it were. And so people naturally have the inclination to judge them more harshly and to think that they're somehow responsible, ultimately, for their illness. Because that's what people do, right? Ugly, unattractive people are, quote-unquote, bad people. And if bad things happen to these people, they've gotten their just desserts. And this, in general, is how the just world hypothesis actually is played out in reality. That it's not just a matter of a sequence of actions, as it was the case with the bank robber example that I mentioned, but also our perception of the attributes of the individual, which of course is heavily mediated by things like appearance and how they're presenting themselves. So a tall Chad, and this has been observed multiple times in the lookism community, can get away with a lot more misdemeanors in terms of his behavior. I'm not necessarily referring to criminal activity, although Jeremy Meeks is, of course, a classic example of how crime might in fact actually pay. But in general, social misdemeanors operating outside of social expectations attractive people get away with that a lot more than non-attractive people. And of course, it's a sliding scale. The less attractive you are, think of bagel guy, the more screwed you are in terms of perceptions and the expectations for you to fall into line. And if you don't do so, then you are viewed as a bad person. And this is part and parcel of why you see so many people when they talk about incels and men who struggle, why they blame them so much. Because typically, men who struggle aren't very attractive, they're not dressed very well, they don't have a lot of money, and therefore, the just world hypothesis, which is a cognitive bias in human beings, by the way, it is a cognitive bias, it's not always accurate, kicks in and they say, ah, this guy is ultimately responsible for his outcomes, ignoring the fact that there's a predetermined cognitive bias here that's interfering with the assessment of the individual in question. For example, maybe the guy is five foot four, not very attractive, balding, and poor. And so all that is playing a role and playing into the fact that you think this guy is a failure and deserves to be a failure because he quote unquote never applied himself, despite the distinct possibility that this individual might have applied himself multiple times in life, but due to things like the phalo effect, again, quoting that guy Pete that you always invite to gatherings, and things like the Matthew effect or the anti-Matthew effect, whereupon failure begets failure, you end up in the situation where it isn't really his fault he was born short and ugly, but you nonetheless perceive him as getting his just desserts. This is your average person. Virtually all normies operate this way. And again, because of the neologism of normie and the lookism community, I'm referring to the old school sense of normie, not referring to looks. But normies operate this way because they don't know any better. If, however, you've trained yourself to think of things in a critical fashion, you might, in fact, avoid falling into some of these traps, at least. But nonetheless, we are just laden, heavily laden with biases that we are, frankly speaking, most of the time not aware of. And being aware of them can certainly help, but they are not a solution necessarily because they're part of our very makeup and our very being as human apes. But before closing up shop for today, I do want to address a certain elephant in the room, and that is the notion of unfairness, right? The fact is, Everyone at least nominally acknowledges that life is unfair, but they rarely put it into practice. And here is where the rubber meets the proverbial road, right? You have some guy who just had really bad cars dealt to him, and instead of acknowledging that this is the definition of unfairness, you assume that he's ended up in the situation deservedly. So it's all well and good to acknowledge that life is unfair, and I even made a video about this, and that we can't really change unfairness. It's just shot through all of life, chock-a-block full of unfairness. But at the very least, we could acknowledge the causal connection between the unfairness of life and the results we can observe instead of assuming, due to our cognitive biases, that people always get what they deserve. It simply isn't true. Sometimes they quote-unquote do, although that's a thorny issue related to things like agency and free will and choice, and that's not the topic of this discussion today. But in many cases, they don't, and as a rule... As a species, we lack the ability to suspend those inclinations, those judgments, and really take into account just how unfair life is. I'm not saying 
we can address unfairness. Maybe we even shouldn't. However, we can at least acknowledge it when it comes into play in life and observe the results rather than assigning blame in certain cases. That's all I'm saying. The world and the universe are not just. They don't give a rat's buttocks about us or our lot in life, and that's just how it is. We can acknowledge that, and we can even work with what we have, but we need to integrate it into our worldview and apply it in how we interact with people. And failing to do so, we just end up like a bunch of normies who just assume the world operates in a certain way, notwithstanding the evidence right in front of your face. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Please leave a like, share, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. Much appreciated. And if I'm still alive, I will check you out later. Do take care. May the gods shower fortune upon you, because the world is not just, and neither are the gods as they are fickle. Take care. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.